Good morning everyone, welcome to this uh, uh, workshop. Um, so, I will just get started with the talk, this, uh, Professor Fartek has, uh, you have already been here one day, so you have enough introduction. So, let me just talk about this national mission on education through ICT and then some of the activities that I want to give an overview of this mission itself, how you can participate in it, what are some of the projects that IIT Bombay is doing and, uh, uh, and then of course, uh, there are some demonstrations I have planned. So, these are the two things that I want to cover today. What is the national mission on education through ICT? How many of you have heard of this before coming here? All of you have heard of? Okay, some of you, most of you have heard of it. So, this mission is launched by MHRD. The objective is to raise the levels of education. The outlay in this mission is rupees 4600 crore, 40 percent of which is reserved for content generation and then 60 percent for bandwidth. Most of it is to establish the infrastructure required to provide bandwidth. It is a very ambitious plan. It is likely to continue in the next plan period as well. Uh, here I told you that 40 percent of the money is reserved for content generation. So, let us see what the content generation topics are. They are classified into 18 line items. Do not have to remember all of this. I am going to give a link for this and then you can see all of this. The ones in blue are the ones that IIT Bombay is involved in. Okay. These are the remaining uh, items, line items. This, uh, the workshop in which you will be participating in is covered under line item 12, talk to a teacher. So, that is what this TTT stands for, talk to a teacher, that is our mission. What is the minimum requirement for funding? Because this is meant to be done this money is to be distributed for anybody who wants to participate in this, which means that you are all potential investigators in this mission. The mission invites you to write proposals. So, what are the requirements for funding? It should be related to education for research other funding sources are available. It should be interinstitutional. Any material developed through this mission has to be delivered as open source. It should belong to one of the 18 line items mentioned earlier. No funding will be provided for infrastructure development. Okay. Funding is based on the deliverables. For example, you can say, I am going to do so many courses, so give me so much money or I am going to train so many faculty members, give me money. Number of that you are going to do 10 workshops, you are going to train 10,000 students, but you cannot say give me 100 computers, give me 2 computers, because when you say give me computers, you are not stating the deliverable. So, the funding is based on deliverable only, not on infrastructure basis. The administration of the mission is as follows, there is a project approval board chaired by the secretary of MHRD. There is a standing committee chaired by the mission director that recommends projects and there are of course, many review committees. The mission director is Mr. N. K. Sinha, joint secretary. His designation is joint secretary distance learning stroke training. So, we must be one of the few countries to have such a high level position for distance education. I am a member of this standing committee. How does one uh, get funding in this? You submit a project and also a pilot for 6 months. The project is reviewed, inputs from the standing committee members and other experts are taken. If the committee is convinced, then a pilot project is recommended, they will give small amount of your total project 
to run a pilot and to demonstrate. If you can demonstrate and show that you can indeed deliver it, the, uh, the main project may be approved. So, either the pilot project is recommended as a standalone project or you are asked to participate in one of the already approved missions. They might say that why do not you join them, why do not you join this project, they will give you money. In any case, we do not reject proposals. In the worst case, we ask PIs to rewrite the proposal to submit an acceptable one. Uh, so, if you visit this site, there is a, you will see a 10 minute spoken tutorial. Let me see if I can uh, start that, see if I can go to the website. So, in this website, there is a 10 minute spoken tutorial. Hello friend, welcome to this brief talk to describe the national mission on education through ICT known as NME ICT. The objective of this talk is as follows, to explain NME ICT so that you can write a proposal. We okay. would love to receive your. Okay. This talk gives uh, more details of format, where to submit your proposal, presentation details, etc. And NME ICT, NME ICT stands for National Mission on Education through ICT. It invites your proposals. Okay. So, to give a flavor of what these, uh, what kind of projects are supported and what kind, so what kind of projects are carried out, I want to give, I want to briefly explain some of the projects that are being done at IIT Bombay and uh, we would want you to participate in all of them, whatever projects that you are interested in. If you think that some of your colleagues may be interested in some or some of your students can contribute to these projects, then you can also ask them to get in touch with us. So, these are uh, some of the projects that we have. The first one is 1000 teacher training program of Professor Fatak that you already uh, know about. Okay, there is actually another one that I wanted to write that I have missed out. This, this is NPTEL, NPTEL is something you are very familiar with. So, I have not I am not going to talk about those, these two because you already know about them. Um, so, I want to talk about IIT Bombay's courses as open source, that is our own courses, how we created them, how we made them available. I want to talk about this. I want to talk about uh, some of the hardware projects that we are doing. I want to explain our open source software efforts and then I want to talk about spoken tutorials. You heard spoken tutorial. Why is it called spoken tutorial? I want to explain as we go along. First, let me take up this this uh, open source course material. So, free courses and textbook from IIT Bombay. Um, there are three items here: IIT Bombay's freely available courses, conversion into textbook, and how you can participate. This institution, CD Center for Distance Engineering Education Program, transmitted more than 100 courses in the last two years. For us, one course meets 40 lectures of uh, classroom instruction. It is like one subject or one paper. They were transmitted completely free through EDUSAT and they were also transmitted through webcast. Anybody who had 100 kbps link could receive them. We had actually optimized this uh, transmission methodology so that our students can also receive. Because what happens is, if you look at some of the transmissions from uh, western sources, they always assume that people have bandwidth, they transmit at uh, 512 kbps or 1 mbps, 2 mbps and most of our uh, public does not have access to. So, we had actually optimized for 100 kbps. We also correspondingly chose the instruction methodologies to be suitable for 100 kbps. Okay, for example, if you are transmitting only in 100 kbps and you write on the blackboard, some of the lines may not be visible. So, we had to modify our instruction methodologies to do that. We are also um, hoping to make these available through DVDs for a low cost 
and uh, we are also hoping to set up a data center from where you can stream all these uh, all these uh, courses so we have about 100 courses from various departments uh, many of them are in the area of computer science and electrical engineering electrical electronics telecommunication engineering we have only one department called electrical engineering it covers all of these triple e telecommunication instrumentation microelectronics all of them come under electrical engineering so electrical engineering and computer science probably have half of these courses okay so uh, this is the uh, project proposal that i have made um, you know this is an area which is uh, open at this point it's a uh, lot of work needs to be done so i would want your participation in this so this uh, project aims to create textbooks starting from our video courses okay the reason why we start with video courses is if i transcribe the video course i already have 40 lecture worth of content and it is already delivered at iit bombay that means students have gone through them they have corrected mistakes and so on and so forth and it also corresponds to a particular syllabus in view of that we said that we will and it is available as open source okay so we first transcribe it and put it in a wiki by wiki i mean a technology not necessarily wiki itself okay so then once i do that from wiki i can give links to the video clips i can say that when somebody is reading through the wiki i can say that listen to what an iit bombay professor uh, says about it so they click it and it should take them to the video clip by that i can also say that you know you want to listen to what an mit professor says give a link to this and this will link this will take the person to some other internet resource of course i can put a link to slides uh, written sheets writ, um, as i mentioned earlier we don't use blackboard we use uh, this document projection camera and uh, people write on this and we scan and put them so each page is like a slide so we have either slides or um, handwritten scanned material available then what happens is this wiki grows through collaboration this starts from iit bombay's video course and hence some material may be missing for example i may be teaching a control course and our students may have already undergone a lecture on laplace transforms so i do not cover laplace transforms whereas in some in university they might say laplace transform is to be taught in this course so obviously that topic will be missing so then people can contribute to this wiki so we have this wiki moderator who will ask people to contribute to this so experts can from various walks of life can write a chapter can write a paragraph and so on contribute to this so in this manner the wiki is going to grow okay so very soon because of lot of things will be missing people will go on adding it will grow then it will become too big for any course for anybody in a college it may even become twice as large as what is what can be done in a typical 40 hour course so what we do is we define uh, uh, something called syllabus okay and of course university exams are based on syllabus syllabus is extremely important and if we can use a book authoring tool to, to apply this syllabus onto wiki extract only the relevant portion and create a textbook obviously this will depend on what is meant by syllabus so actually it's not a, uh, it is not a straightforward topic but then uh, some of the ideas are that syllabus can be defined in terms of uh, prerequisites index terms keywords and then also things like um, how much of time has to be spent on this topic right correspondingly you may say that only so much material is available to be taken or you might say that you may also define in terms of negatives for example you might say that it is uh, for example multidimensional calculus but not sobolev's theorem so you would leave out those things so syllabus you know if you can define define this 
using the book authoring tool, apply this syllabus onto wiki, extract the relevant portion and create it, you know put it in the textbook. So, what will happen is some manual intervention is required in this transcription and also in this textbook creation. Some material will not be added, uh, some extra material will be there, you may have to remove them and so on. Um, but I believe that even if it is, even if 70, 80 percent of the thing can be created in an automated fashion, then through manual intervention you can actually fix them. So, this is the textbook project that we are working on and uh, so automatic transcription, use of LaTeX, MathML, data mining, Python XML, these are some of the related areas for this and we need uh, participation. Okay. Next I want to talk about open source hardware. By the way, I am saying all this just to give a flavor of what kind of projects that we are doing. right? I have already talked about our uh, transmission of IIT Bombay's courses, we already have 100 courses, we are going to make them available on a server and so on. So, this is the textbook uh, creation out of that. Now, I am going to talk about open source hardware. First, I want to talk about, uh, so there are three things I want to talk about, a single board heater system and then uh, virtual labs and then a low cost PC. These are the things I want to talk to you about. So, this is a, a single board heater system. I have a sample of this, okay, single board heater system. So, what is this? Um, by controlling the temperature of a plant, so it is actually, so can I project this? Has to be focused. So, underneath this, uh, this uh, plate is a small blade, I do not know whether you can see this, let me make an attempt. See this is where it is, actually it is a very small blade whose temperature we try to control. The temperature is, the blade is something like 1 centimeter by 4 centimeter. So, small blade, control of its temperature is the objective of this unit. So, that blade is the plant. Okay. We want to control its temperature and we want to study all the issues related to that. So, the objective is to create a device for this purpose, so that this can be used in a lab that studies control experiments. Okay. You will see that as I explained, you will see that it can be used for several other things as well. So, this is uh, heated by uh, nichrome coil and the you can see the wire from here. So, heating is done through that. You can change the current that goes through it by pulse width modulation. This uh, device can be cooled by a fan and uh, the heart of this uh, intelligence here is uh, at mega 16 microcontroller that is behind this, below this display and you can see uh, a serial interface, you see that, Move it here. Yeah. you can see that there is a serial interface, there is a USB interface and of course, we have used, uh, what else do we need? We use the standard power supply. Okay, use a standard power supply so that it can be bought off the shelf. Uh, the bill of materials for this is of the order of 1500 rupees. Okay. Um, so, it has a plant, it has a microcontroller, sensors, actuators. In this case, there are two actuators, the fan speed is one, the heater current is the second one. It is done through pulse width modulation through this uh, at mega 16 microcontroller. Uh, it is used in process control, computer control, instrumentation, microcontroller, embedded systems, real time systems. Um, it is available for rupees 2400. Uh, this, uh, this company called Next Robotics actually makes it available. So, you can just pay there and get it. Our uh, design is also available as open source with bill of materials mentioned. So, if you have access to Lamington Road or similar kind of uh, resource, you can actually get them. 
uh, I was thinking when I wrote this that it costs about 1000, 1000 rupees, it actually costs 1500 rupees bill of materials. The um, power supply is of the order of 3 400 rupees and uh, this AD 590 temperature sensor is a uh, little expensive. So, it comes to about 1500 rupees. The, the, this is useful in virtual labs. So, virtual labs is one of the projects supported by this mission. Its main aim is to create experimental resource at a few places and make them available for students all over the country. Okay. So, typically it is used for expensive uh, equipment. Then one can ask, uh, you know, why are we doing this for such, a, such an inexpensive one? It is so cheap, everybody can buy. Why do we have to make it available through virtual lab? There are many reasons. The first one is, uh, if just because something is free, people are not going to use them. Right? You need to, there is a learning curve. You need to understand how to use it. You need to set up a laboratory. You need to understand the instructions and so on. So, here what we plan to do is, what we have already done is, it is on the virtual lab. That means, you go to a browser and then you uh, go to type this URL and you will have you log on to this and then it will say, okay, do this experiment. You can do the experiment and then you can see the results on the screen. Then you can download the results, save it and we also give the Scilab files. How many of you know about MATLAB? Okay. How many of you know about Scilab? Okay. Scilab is uh, open source equivalent of MATLAB and uh, I have some uh, thing to say about this little later. So, we make available Scilab files also. So, you can actually analyze the data. So, if you are convinced of its utility, if you think that it is useful to you, okay, so that can be that decision can be made without the infrastructure of getting some finding out how to use it because all that take time. Here you find out, then you say, okay, I want to use it, then I do not mind investing some more time. Okay. Then give a, a demonstration to your colleagues, to your head of the department students, whatever, then you can take it forward. So, it is for that purpose, this, uh, uh, so this uh, uh, virtual lab has a, has a good role to play even for inexpensive equipment such as this. So, we have done a large number of experiments using this device. So, we have, uh, we have created, uh, we have uh, written the document for every one of those, most of those. The instruction manual is more than 200 pages, run projects through students at IIT Bombay and distribute to distribute this to colleges and um, we have distributed, I wrote uh, 20, we have distributed more than 50 as of now and uh, we want to encourage development of similar devices for other courses also. We are in fact going to conduct uh, a workshop uh, in the month of May, a little later in this month and then if, if you think that somebody would be interested in attending this from your college, they will be most welcome. The next uh, thing that I want to talk about is real time uh, DAC, data acquisition uh, devices, uh, microcontrollers, DSP devices and so on through open source software. Uh, how many of you use Linux? Very good. So, there is, uh, there is a, a package called Comedy. How many of you know about Comedy? Um, so, Comedy is an acronym for Control and Measurement Device Interface. It has uh, interfaces for more than 100 A2D cards. Uh, so, which is, which means that the problem with, uh, uh, you know, using open source software is for data acquisition and things like that is, now, how do you, who, who, do we have the device drivers? So, that is why this project is very important. So, we are thinking of setting up a rack, get all these cards, put them and then set up this interface, give standard inputs, uh, give G, GUI support through RTAI. RTAI is another project that interacts, works with uh, Scilab. 
So, the way it happens is you have comedy sitting in the back end okay, and that com connects to the device and then after comedy you have RTAI and then Scilab as the front end. So, we can actually uh, get the information from there and make this available to the remote people that is the idea. Web enable this so that students can access, access them remotely. Repeat this for popular microcontrollers also. right? For example, I was talking about uh, Atmel uh, uh, family okay, uh, and various uh, other microcontrollers also, PIC microcontroller and so on, ARM microcontroller and set up all educational support through the web. So, this is one of the projects that we are working on. We actually want partners in all of this. If some of you can demonstrate that you have the capability, that you have expertise in your institution, that you want to join. So, you know it will be very good. Uh, another one I want to talk about is uh, about building a low cost PC. Uh, why is this important? Uh, very soon bandwidth is going to be available because we are, we are saying that 60 percent of the, the mission money of 4600 crore is to be used for establishing the bandwidth. Uh, as a matter of fact, BSNL has been uh, given this job and BSNL has given 95 percent discount for because it is because of the large volume of the order which means that at 5 percent of the cost the bandwidth is going to be available and bandwidth will be available, content will be available, what about uh, connectivity, what about you know giving PCs to students. So, here we are actually talking about a low cost access device. So, for example, we are talking about a motherboard which can have a low speed processor let us say of the order of 512 megahertz, 1 GB RAM or even half a GB will be sufficient. So, we believe that this motherboard can be at the cost of about 10 dollars. The display device is a 7 inch uh, device, we are talking about a small unit. The students can carry them with them to home and so on. Um, this will be accessible even to uh, poor students and also to school students. And the other expenses, keyboard, mouse, etcetera, the cost is uh, 5 dollar. Linux OS or uh, Google's operating system. So, we are th thinking about a total cost of 25 to 30 dollars for uh, 10,000 pieces. So, the question is, is anyone here interested in building it? Do you think that you have a team at your institution that can participate in this? MHRD is very keen to uh, get this done at various places in the country. So, that finally, you see the market for this is of the order of a million pieces. Million is nothing in India. right? Next I want to talk about open source software. I am giving you a flavor of some of the projects done at IIT Bombay. Okay? So, that uh, you can participate in this and you can also get ideas to write your own project proposals. Open source software at IIT Bombay, we have a very big activity. So, this is actually one of the uh, probably very important slides, one of the most important slides in my talk. The commercial software is expensive. Um, unfortunately or fortunately, our students think that it is free. Okay? Uh, in fact, I was uh, using this, um, I was teaching this course called um, uh, Embedded Systems. It is a I think CS682, it is a computer science course. It is taught by Professor Kavi Arya and Kriti Ramamritam. And then I taught the controls part of that course and I taught using um, Scilab. Okay. Then I asked the students, you know, how many people in the class had used Scilab? There were 25 students and one of only one of them raised his hand. So, I scolded him, why did he use Scilab? Looks like everybody uses MATLAB, you are using Scilab. So, he said that um, he was working for an embedded systems company in the Pune region and uh, that company was into niche products uh, like all other embedded systems companies into creating microcontrollers and embedded systems for devices such as fans, uh, maybe computers, 
microphone, uh, mobile phones, uh, washing machines, whatever you name it. And um, this company, his boss told him that MATLAB was too expensive and they could not uh, afford it. So, can you tell me uh, how much, uh, what was the, so his, his boss told him a copy of uh, MATLAB for their configuration would cost X amount. Can you tell me how much that student said? What is the cost of MATLAB to a company? Take a guess. Um, use of uh, unauthorized software by commercial establishments results in disasters. Companies may even have to close down jail sentence, etcetera. Because of this, most of our small and medium scale enterprises in India do not use any software. Commercial software is expensive. They are not aware of open source software because we do not train our students on open source software. It puts our companies at a great disadvantage. Many of our companies are in the small and medium size. And so, I conclude uh, this slide by saying that there is no alternative to open source software. So, we are looking at uh, Python, Blender, Scilab, LaTeX for this uh, as part of open source effort. So, Python uh, uh, project is led by Professor Prabhu Ramachandran of IIT Bombay. So, the website is fossi.in, f o double s w e dot i n. You want to take this down and write this down, led by Professor Prabhu Ramachandran of IIT Bombay. Blender is uh, useful for 3D animation. Professor Sridhar Iyer of IIT Bombay, our computer science department is doing this. The web address is oscar.iitb.ac.in. Okay. Creating animation uh, supported content for educational material. Scilab is a good substitute for MATLAB and uh, so you can look at scilab.org. This is the original website. Our effort is in scilab.in. Okay. Scilab.in, in for India and so your participation is welcome. Um, one project idea, you take a, any standard textbook okay, into um, and then, so here I have written Scilab Python, but you can, uh, you can talk about uh, any open source software and any textbook, any standard textbook. Choose any textbook, get coded all numerical examples and some problems using Scilab, Python or any other open source, any other suitable uh, software. Get the correctness certified by the subject expert, get a honorarium partner with IIT. So, this is, um, you know, I was giving this talk to talk at Symbiosis in uh, Pune and there um, a computer science professor came and said that he wanted to uh, do one project on UML using the open source equivalent of UML, take all the examples and code it. Okay. So, uh, this is one and so this can be done through your projects, uh, pro your, your students. You might have some bright students and they may be looking for projects. So, let them do that. Okay. Scilab, MATLAB, Python, whatever that is, uh, not MATLAB, Scilab, Python or that UML software that I talked about and so on. Problems with the open source software is that there are no good documents. Okay. People will say, where is the textbook? Who will tell me how to use it? And there is nobody. Spoken tutorials is one solution. Okay. What is that? I will just give a demo of what I mean by a spoken tutorial. So, what I will do is, let me open a screen capturing software called I show you. So, can you see this line here, this vertical line? Can you also see this horizontal line? Actually, it defines a rectangle. Whatever is going to come in that is going to be captured. So, what I will do is, I will do a demo using Scilab 5.2. Let me give a demonstration to the visitors for this uh, workshop. Let me define a matrix A. Let, let it be a 3 by 3 matrix. Now, 
okay i have defined this matrix let me calculate the eigen values of this matrix okay using the spectrum command let me define a vector x equals 1 through 10 okay then let me plot x so i've done the plot of course going back to the matrix let me find the inverse of this matrix i have computed so let me come to the uh, let me conclude this demo so i have created this uh, movie now see this let me give a demonstration to the visitors for this uh, workshop let me define a matrix a let, let it be a 3 by 3 matrix okay i have defined this matrix let me calculate the eigen values of this matrix okay using the spectrum command let me define a vector x equals 1 through 10 okay then let me plot x so i've done the plot of course going back to the matrix let me find the inverse of this matrix i have computed so let me come to the uh, let me conclude this so how easy was it to create so i was doing something i was describing that activity and this uh, this uh, technology is known as screencast it is a it is a faithful reproducer it is like uh, the person who uh, who explained who narrated maharashtra war uh, this um, mahabharat war to dhritarashtra okay dhritarashtra a blind person who actually saw the war how because he told everything so you can say this uh, screencast mechanism is that it captures everything that happens on the screen it's a slave okay i could have given the running commentary in any language i could have explained that in hindi could i explain this in marathi okay so let me just go here and then show you some of the things that we have this is the same website we went to just to give a power of this this spoken tutorial so i'm uh, this uh, uh, this software cam studio is a open source software available on windows so you already possibly had this bhojpuri so let me show a step process learning is more effective when animation and narrations are presented simultaneously and an activity convert avi files to flash files and many other uses the uses of this little known software are limitless cam so that was uh, that let me show you marathi is there anyone here uh, any visitor knows marathi anybody who has come from outside okay, let's play marathi नमस्कार आई आई टी मुंबई या सीडीप तर्फे या प्रशिक्षण अपने स्वागत असो या प्रशिक्षण द्वारे तुम्हाला कैम्प स्टूडियो वाली अप्रसिद्ध सॉफ्टवेयर से उपयोग अनेक है कैम्प स्टूडियो वापर मैक्रोसॉफ्ट विंडोज नाइनटी फाइव नाइनटी एट एम ई एंटी फोर नाइन वरचा कैम्प स्टूडियो से पान उघड़ जाए खाली जाऊन उतरवन घे खुणे क्लिक करा 
दिलेल्या सूचनांचे पालन करा म्हणजे कॅम्प स्टुडिओ तुमच्या संगणकावर उतरवले जाईल एकदा तुम्ही ही आज्ञावली संगणकावर उतरवलीत की त्याच्या चिन्हावर डबल क्लिक करा संपूर्ण पडदा चित्रित होईल एनेबल ऑटो पॅन हे कॅम्प स्टुडिओ मधील एक अद्वितीय वैशिष्ट्य आहे ही निवड केली असता चित्रण क्षेत्र हे चित्रणा दरम्यान तुमच्या कर so we have of course uh, for example we we have some on uh, latex i uh, just one second uh, you can see the power of this simple tool now do you agree that if we make our slides and recorded videos available to teachers and if there are some enthusiastic teachers across the country then what i mentioned yesterday that in local languages they could interact with some students and they could create a spoken tutorial in their local language on any aspect of the programming course or for that matter any other course so we are going to heavily uh, uh, use this that is the proposal to extend the open source contents that we will be putting in the website then i want to show this uh, we also have something called dubbing here if you click this by the way these are all in spoken-tutorial.org the same website in which that nmeict talk is there so here dubbing on windows os using windows movie maker so here i'll show hindi namaskar dosto cd iit bombay ki taraf se main aap sabhi ka is abhyas mein abhinandan karta hu windows movie maker microsoft windows ka ek mukhya ghatak hai ye ek sampadan prakriya upkaram hai jo ki sabhi adhunik windows sanskar me xp atwa vista ke liye uplabdh hai यह आपके पर्दे पर एक रिक्त फिल्म परियोजना खोलेगा बाएं तरफ आप मूवी टास्क पैनल पाएंगे इस पैनल में अनेक विकल्प हैं। पहला विकल्प वीडियो अंकित करने का है इस विकल्प के अंतर्गत आप इंपोर्ट वीडियो the idea is that you understand one topic the student can download the software and try them in parallel okay that's why the tutorial word spoken tutorial uh, our target is to popularize any open source all open source software packages so let's take uh, letter writing so letter writing study plan has two spoken tutorial compiling and letter writing in letter writing we have four languages So let me click this. I'm not sure whether you can uh, see the text. These are little small, but I just want to uh, demonstrate. Latex se pain padte, kadi zangal erdu murey patri ariya. Inda tani murey kalvikke ungalai varavir kere. Ippodu ningal moonre window kalai par kere gal. Ivai latex molam padte kere. Yen enral. ஒவ்வொரு கம்பைலேஷனுக்கு பின்பும் அது தானாகவே சமீபத்திய ஓகேன் which costs only about 100 rupees the recording can be played back on a pc as a movie only a 10 rupee headphone is required this can be a mass movement how to dub it we saw that we actually how did i produce all the dubbed ones in cam studio we ran a competition to dub the english into other languages it turned out that the dubbed ones in marathi and hindi were actually better than english original so the dubbing one can actually be better the important thing in this is so many people uh, from iit bombay participated in, in it students children of support staff housewives so on anybody you know but even retired people so we had all these uh, languages i had links to all of this but i have already demonstrated what are the benefits the small file size so only about 1 mb per minute in fact less than 1 mb per minute in one cd you can pack more than 11 hours of spoken tutorial in 10 minutes in 10 rupee uh, cd 
even a small bandwidth will do for streaming. We are talking about uh, you know making these available through mobile phones. Do you know the average time uh, spent by a Mumbaiker in traveling every day? If only that person can listen to one of the spoken tutorials. They want to learn about Python. They want to learn about Java. They want to learn about C programming. They want to learn about simulation software packages like Spice, Ascend. Right? There are various open source tools available, software. So, here our focus is on software. Spoken tutorial, the, the word tutorial says that this fellow can actually try that in parallel. So, the focus is coming through software and through software we can explain subject matter, ascend chemical engineering simulation, spice electronic simulation. Okay? So, I have been uh, you know I have been saying that it is cheaper than a textbook because in one CD you can pack 11 hours of spoken tutorial. Okay? And, uh, this uh, a PC system with a headphone and so on will be cheaper to create than a classroom. Okay, I am not saying that replace them, I am saying that these are inexpensive, you can add them. Running commentary can be dubbed into other languages, original, can, original content itself can be in other languages. In fact, I ask all the people, I ask uh, whenever I give this talk, I always ask, supposing there is a problem that a 10th or 11th grade child uh, understood okay, some problem methodology, uh, uh, it has to be conveyed to the other classmates. Okay. Who is a better person to do that? Is that child who understood that or a Nobel laureate? Okay. So, the answer is always clear, it is always that the person at that level who has understood, because they know what is known to them. You will explain everything in a way they can, classmates can understand. So, it is great for community participation as well. Okay. Um, so, 80 to 90 percent of the public who are now left out of the IT revolution. So, I argue that about 90 percent of our children have become second class citizens, because they do not have access to IT. If you look at all new initiatives they are all IT based, they are all IT based. You know for example, if you want to book a ticket irctc.co.in, turn out to go and stand in the queue. Okay. Another example, I mean this is the entrance exam time. Okay. So, my daughter is uh, you know applying for JIPMER to you know entrance exam, medical entrance exam for Pondicherry. They make the application available only from Pondicherry. So, you have to send a DD by post to them and then they will send the form and then you fill it and send it again. So, this uh, there are three uh, the uh, three legs involved through post, but if you have access to internet you can download the form, fill it, get it certified and send one only once. So, obviously, the person who has access to internet is at an advantage. So, in every one of the things web check in checking the weather, checking the commodity prices, you name it, it is all through IT. So, I believe that we have already made, you know, if, if we have not made, we will be making most of our children into second class citizens, because they do not have access to internet. Now, the point is that, uh, of course, some, uh, you know, there, there are some efforts to convert the whole thing, even the screen and so on into local languages. But the problem is this children always want to know that if I study IT in my local language, will I get a job in uh, Infosys, will I get a job in TCS. And so, the answer is almost always no. A person who knows English is at an advantage. That is the reason that everybody wants to learn in English. So, in our technology, the screen is the same okay? and all our children are taught English. Okay? In fact, it is a very sensitive topic. You tell somebody go and learn in Marathi. First thing you will ask is in what language are your children studying? Why do you want me to study in Marathi? Okay. So, this technology actually is turns out to be very convenient from that point of view also. Hopefully, the children who use this will also pick up English, okay, which is something that everybody wants to. So, this is something that I have 
talked about. There is only one uh, thing that I want to show in this web page and then I will uh, conclude. In this uh, uh, spoken tutorial uh, activity, I believe that we need to create of the order of 10,000 spoken tutorials, each of 10 minute duration to cover all open source software. Okay. And um, to be dubbed into each one to be dubbed into 20 languages. So, we are talking about a need to create something like 2 lakh spoken tutorial. Uh, if we create, if, if it costs 1000 rupees to create them, okay, to create one spoken tutorial of 10 minute duration, I am saying that it will cost, there is a budget of 1000 rupees. One can say why should it cost 1000 rupees? Uh, it should be used by 1000 people. So, unless it is of good quality, unless it is correct, unless it is pedagogically sound, people are not going to use. So, if it is a project of, it is a national project, we have to make sure the quality is good in order to ensure that we need to spend that money. Okay. So, we are talking about 2 lakh spoken tutorials to be made, each one costing about 1000 rupees. So, what is the total cost? It comes to 20 crore. So, if we have, if we spend 20 crore, we can cover all open source software okay, and made of, make them available also in all Indian languages. I am talking about 20 Indian languages. Okay. Where is the manpower? How are we going to create these 2 lakh spoken tutorials? So, we have the workforce. Supposing I give some kind of a stipend to a student at a cost of a stipend of 25,000 rupees a year. In return, the student will create two spoken tutorials a month. Okay. Two spoken tutorials, each one of 10 minute duration, it is not too long. Right? So, it, it is doable. So, a, a student can do, so 25 spoken tutorials, 24 spoken tutorials, we pay them 25,000 rupees as stipend. If 100 students do this, it will cost 25 lakhs. Can we find 100 students? We can find 100 students even in IIT Bombay, 25 lakhs. If I find 1000 students, supposing I open it up for all over the country, it will cost 2.5 crore. So, in 8 years it can be done, the 20 crore. Okay. Now, of course, I am not including housewives, retired people, professionals, unemployed people and so on. If you include, we can do it faster. Of course, that 10,000 is just a number that we will eventually want to make it. But uh, initially, even 1000, we will cover quite a few things, how to browse, how to buy a ticket through IRCTC, stuff like that, many of those things can be covered very easily. So, it is doable, but it requires a lot of administration. We are talking about uh, a demand, we are talking about a workforce, how are we going to do this? So, we are hoping to do this through this portal spokentutorial.org. What I wanted to show was, by the way, this you might have noticed that this is done through Drupal. So, we have uh, wiki and then uh, we are in the process of identifying the SRS for this web page. We have spoken tutorials website entity, what is meant by a user, what is meant by a script, what is a video topic, what is a video, maybe I should make this bigger. video revision, video comments, video links, study plan, software, software resources, bits, bit comments, bits application. This is one link. What are the sp spoken tutorial website uh, processes? User, I mean uh, these are all verbs, video, video approval workflow bits, creation of bits, updation. Okay. Some of these have to be expanded. So, we are in the process of identifying the SRS for this and we have something called desired features. We have to create an outline document with examples, videos, study plans, bits, external links search, feedback, 
what are the views seen by different people, what are the use cases, guidelines for creation. And then of course, we have things like what is a spoken tutorial, how to write a script for a spoken tutorials, guidelines for narrating a spoken tutorial, both original and dubbed version, guidelines for screencasting a spoken tutorial, so various forms and so on. So, you can see that, uh, so we are in the process of identifying SRS for this, because it is a huge activity. We are talking about 2 lakh creation of 2 lakh spoken tutorials to be reviewed for correctness, accuracy and so on and uh, we have a big workforce, how are we going to make this together. So, we are uh, planning to use Drupal for this purpose, planning to use the community activities like uh, Facebook and so on and so forth, various things, uh, we need to use everything. And I strongly believe that through this technology, we can make our children, all our children IT literate, whether they, because IT is not rocket science how to use web, how to browse web, how to buy a ticket through IRCTC. If you explain it to anybody, they can do it. Okay. So, why not make this available to our children? So, that is the objective of this uh, thing I would want you to participate. I think I have come to the end of this. Let me just uh, conclude. So, fund, uh, funding for our work has come from the National Mission on Education through ICT. You can also get funding, see this uh, site that I gave earlier. So, open source efforts are not only idealistic, they also make economic and commercial sense as well. It has a potential to empower all our children to collaborate and make us a developed nation. And IIT Bombay is working on several open source projects. We invite you to join us. Thank you.